Hey folks, it's been a while since we've done a Lightburn video, and I thought that since we have a new release coming fairly soon, that this would be a good opportunity to go over some of the features that are coming in the 9.21 release. First and foremost, Lightburn has a new file format. So if I load this vector graphic, which you've seen me use before in other videos, it takes about two seconds to load, just about 2,000 milliseconds, and this file on disk is approximately 53 megabytes, 52.8 megs. If I load this file in the new Lightburn 2 file format, the same file with the same content and the same graphics, everything identical, takes 517 milliseconds, or half a second to load, and the file on disk is 13.3 megabytes. And so what that means is this file, same content, same everything, loads four times faster and takes one quarter the space. Now, not every file is going to get those exact same savings. Some will actually save more, some slightly less, but in general, um, you're looking at about four to six times a speed improvement and about one quarter the size on disk. And this is across the board. We've just changed the way that the content is stored. Um, we're not using compression yet or anything super clever. Uh, so this data format is still easy to work with. It's just much faster. It's designed to be parsed more quickly. On top of that, we've added a new sharing mechanism. Now, this is not something that you have to know about, and you probably won't be affected by it at all, other than the reduction in memory requirements. So this file is actually two copies of the same stump. If I were to make more copies like this, in the original version of Lightburn, the current releases, these are actual new copies of the same data. They are just replicates, and if I was to save this to disk, it would save all of this data, and all of this data, and all of this data, and so on. In the new Lightburn and new Lightburn file format, each of these copies, until they're edited, retain a link to the original. And so what that means is that this outline here with all of these nodes doesn't store itself again. It knows that it is just a copy of this one and hasn't been edited. So it just saves a reference to the original. Now this happens in the new file format as well as in memory. So your memory requirements when using uh, large files or large arrays of content will be lower. Um, so that's going to improve performance, particularly on lower-end machines who are somewhat RAM constrained, and it will help out uh, users using the 32-bit version as well. This has been extended also to images. So, for example, if I bring in this plumber, this file on disk right now takes about uh, 136 kilobytes of data. If I make a grid array of this, and make this, let's say we'll do eight by five. So that's 40 copies of that original. And I save that. Something strange happens. This file is actually smaller than the other one. And the reason it's smaller is the thumbnail gets a little bit different. And so the thumbnail in this case is actually taking up a significant amount of room uh, in the Lightburn file. But the having 40 copies of this image map makes it not much bigger and changes the thumbnail enough that the thumbnail itself got smaller and making the thumbnail smaller made the file smaller. It's a little bit counterintuitive, but the upshot of all of that is having 40 copies of this graphic in Lightburn or on disk no longer takes up 40 times the amount of space uh, in memory or on disk. So this is a good thing. Your projects are smaller you'll be able to work with larger project files in general without having memory issues or uh, requiring as much RAM. We've also added multi-image scanning. So to give you an idea of what I mean by that, normally in Lightburn, if you were to fill these images or run this image as a job, if I preview this, you'll see it scans one image at a time uh, moving from left to right. However, when I bring this page up, I can now choose four images to fill them by groups or fill them all at once, which you couldn't do before. And so now previewing shows that all of these plumbers get scanned at the same time. And so if you do large batches of 
graphics that contain images, you'll save a lot of time with this. It used to be that they would scan one at a time and now we can do multiple scans together. We've also extended this to work with transparent images as well. So if I take this Cartoon Rhino, which you've probably seen me use before, um, reorient it, rotate it a little bit, scale it, do fun things with it. If I preview this, you'll notice that this is composited together properly. You can't see the plumbers or the other Rhino, the bigger Rhino, behind the smaller one. Um, Lightburn is now properly handling both transparency and compositing when using multi-image scanning. So if I set this layer to scan shapes individually and run the preview again, you can now see that these things are all overlapping and muddy the way that the current version of Lightburn does work. If I go back into the image property settings and change this to fill all shapes at once, now when I preview, you can see that things are properly hidden um, and properly cut out. And this works for any image mode, dithering, uh, thresholding, grayscale, and so on. Um, and transparency is supported. So if I change this to, uh, let's say, just dither and run that preview again, you can see that those dithered shapes are still doing what they're supposed to. We've also added, and this is kind of a big deal, we have a new feature in Lightburn specifically for doing image adjustments. I'll bring in a graphic here just to work with. So current versions of Lightburn uh, and for quite some time have had shape properties which allow you to adjust properties of the image. So for example, gamma is sort of a mid-tone curve. Um, by lowering the gamma value, I'm raising the brightness of the middle brightness levels in this image, but I'm leaving black and white where they are. Um, so you can play with gamma, you can adjust contrast, you can adjust brightness, and so on. And you've been able to do this in Lightburn for quite some time, but most people, I feel, don't know that these controls are here. We also have image enhancement. So uh, edge enhancement, I guess, would be the better thing to call it. This basically makes edge detail much, much stronger. It bolds it effectively. So if I set this off, or let me do, turn this back on, but I'll turn it off from here. If you watch the whiskers as I turn this up, you can see that they develop a black halo, and that gives you a much stronger, much more defined edge when you burn this on a laser. And when engraving images in general, you actually want the edges and the overall image quality to look a little bit harsh to your eye. And when it runs on the laser, that harshness will end up basically giving you a slightly stronger punch on those edges and uh, allow you to see more detail in the end result. It uh, It's a little counterintuitive, but it tends to make things look better and not worse. The biggest problem that we have with this is that most people don't know that they are there. So in the next version of Lightburn, we've added the adjust image feature. And so this allows you to change these settings in real time, and it shows you all of the settings for images, including your uh, dithering mode, whether you've got this image set to negative or not. Um, if I choose halftone, for example, I can adjust the halftone uh, cell count and so on in real time. Um, I can change my DPI here, so I'm going to do that to make this a little finer, uh, and so on. And I'm looking at a side-by-side -side of the original image here and the dithered end result that Lightburn is going to send to my laser over here and I can zoom this in or out. It matches the two displays so that I can make meaningful comparisons of these two things. So if I put this on Stuki, which is my personal favorite dithering mode, for images at least, for photographic things, you can see individual dots here. Um, I can go and look to make sure that various details that I want captured in the output look correct. Um, and this dithered output version is live. So for example, I'm gonna change this to newsprint just because it updates quickly. Um, if I modify my contrast, 
you can see that the contrast of the output image is changing. Uh, change my brightness, change my gamma. Um, these things are affecting this output image on the fly in real time as I make these changes. And so you'll have a much easier time adjusting your images um, and tuning them um, and just a much easier time accessing these settings than you could in previous versions of Lightburn. Having them all in this same place means that they're much easier to find. Um, these settings here are all settings on the image layer, on the cut, uh, cut layer. Um, and so those are the settings that you would normally access by double clicking here and changing them in the image layer. And the others, uh, enhance radius and amount, contrast, brightness, and gamma, these are settings that would normally be on shape properties and they are set per image. So it's important to remember that these settings are layer settings and these settings are image settings. So if you have more than one image in your file on the same layer, these settings here are going to be affecting all of them. So just uh, a key point to keep in mind. We've also added for the next release, a measuring tool. And so this is something that Lightburn has had at least in uh, some form for quite a while, um, but we've made a fairly significant improvement on what's there already. So in the current version of Lightburn, if I wanted to measure how far apart the midpoints of these two hexagons were, I could do this using the line tool. Now, if you watch down here at the bottom in this status bar, as I drag out a line from here to here, you can see there is a length value on the end there. And that length value is telling me how long this line is that I'm creating. If I right mouse click or just hit escape, it cancels the current line. And so this has always been the way we've recommended people to take measurements. So if I want to measure from this dot, or from, sorry, from that corner to this corner, I can see that that was 31.7 millimeters long. And now I just right click and I haven't made a new line. That's useful, but there's a lot more information that we could present. And so we've now added a measurement tool in Lightburn. And so with this, if you hover over a shape, it highlights the shape in green. Uh, hovering over a line segment will uh, highlight that segment in purple. And you can see over here, the shape has six nodes connected by six lines. There are no curves in this hexagon shape. Uh, the area is this many millimeters squared. The perimeter length is 150 millimeters, so that means it is exactly 150 millimeters around. Um, and then the segment, I can see this segment is 25 millimeters long, where it starts and ends, uh, what the difference is in the start and end point, uh, the angle of this line, and so on. And if I'm pointing at an arc, like on this circle, I can see that the arc radius is 20 millimeters, and that's where the center of the circle is. Um, so, perimeter length, area, number of nodes, segment length, start point, end point, all of this. Um, you can also click, hold, and drag, and the snapping behaviors will affect this dragged line, but this isn't creating new geometry. If, as soon as I let go, it's gone. This is a temporary transient line just used for measurement, and so I can see when I click here and drag over to here, the distance between the two center points of these hexagons is 71.8 millimeters shown in the box um, and I can see where the start and end points are I can see what the angle of this line is and so on um, so this is quite useful um, and the view controls are also still live while this box is up so I can pan and drag and move the view around zoom in zoom out just hit escape to cancel it like any other tool and it's gone and I have made no changes uh, so that's also fairly handy um, next up, uh, we have a new text editing feature. So this is a test of some text. Normally to edit text, you would just double click and place the cursor and make your adjustments and so on. This works well, but if you have something like this, where your text is upside down or scaled or bent or things like that, sometimes it's counterintuitive to use the cursor in weird orientations. And you can't drag select a portion of your text and edit you know, parts of it, replace parts of it easily, that kind of thing. So we've added a right click, edit text shape box. And with this box up, I can 
make changes, make selections, change the font, uh, and so on, only for the entirety of the text for font changes. Um, but individual things, like if I want to replace this word or these words, this is some text of some kind. It's much easier to make larger edits, uh, move the cursor around, uh, bulk click and copy, uh, delete, that kind of thing. So uh, this is an easier way to edit larger volumes of text, and you still have access to all of the other text controls in here as well. So the last thing that I'm going to talk about today is Lightburn's new print feature. Now, we've always had the ability to save from the preview window, for example. So if I hit Alt-P to bring up my preview, I could click Save Image here, and it would save whatever you're looking at. Uh, and that works. It's possible to send client proofs in that form, for example. But if your graphics are complicated, that may not be ideal. The image may not be at the scale that you want or give you the quality that you want. So we now have the ability to say Print, in black only or keeping colors. And so to give you an idea of what that means, if I put an outline around this in red, and we'll call that our cutout line, and I say save this in black only or print this in black only, I'll call this plumber. So if I open up that plumber file, you can now see he's right there in the middle. I can zoom in and the quality is great at a variety of zoom levels. So it's stored at the resolution of the printer, not at the resolution of your job, and the outline has been converted from red to black. So this would be an ideal proof to send to a client. If you have a laser that uses a print driver, so for example, Epilog, Trotec, Gravograph, GCC, they use print driver based laser control. So if you have CorelDRAW or Adobe Illustrator or things like that, you can print directly from those software packages to your laser. Lightburn has never been able to drive those, but now we can because we can print while keeping color. So I'm going to print this to that same PDF file just to show you. So when I open that file, now I can see my image in the middle and my vector graphic around the outside properly in the color that I chose. And so this means that you can print from Lightburn to a print driver based laser and it should just work. Uh, there may be issues with this. We haven't been able to test this as thoroughly as we would like, but if you encounter any issues with it, please let us know. That's all I have for now. Um, we're hoping to have this out sometime between mid-March to the end of March, um, so you should look for these soon. Thanks for watching.